are talking video shop tales of terror and this is a low budget British horror comedy anthology movie multiple directors um, and it has a few recognizable faces if you are familiar with the kind of genre movies that come out of the UK particularly your low budget um, horror movies heading up the cast is Danny Thompson who also is a, a producer on this movie and she plays multiple roles in this in this film. Um, she was even in another film very similar to this that I reviewed recently called One Night Rental, which also dealt with uh, the uh, video, kind of like a retro video shop kind of movie. Um, but you've also got the likes of Charlie Bond, uh, Aviana Snow. Again, those names might not mean much to some of you, but if you are a, an ardent, low-budget British movie, uh, schlocky horror fan then you may recognize some of them anyway the setup is as follows there's this spooky old video shop uh, which is um, got this kind of creepy guy the proprietor in there and uh, he's effectively got this young woman this goth girl working for him uh, she's working there because she had a late fee and he she either had to pay it or work off her debt she's chosen to work it off and we see her having to deal with a variety of strange customers and situations that arise in this uh, shop. Uh, punctuated, of course, by some short stories that make up our anthology. Now, what do we think? So, preface this by saying this is a very low budget, probably somewhat micro budget movie in some ways. Uh, I won't go into each film individually because I feel um, my critiques may have be kind of somewhat universal with them to be honest i will say the ones i liked the best certainly the the top one for me was this um one if i say the name in full it will get the uh, video taken down i'm sure but it says mary whitehouse is a expletive um and uh, this is effectively a parody of the evil dead movie and it's it's if you're not familiar with mary whitehouse which you may not be if you're from the out, outside of the uk she was a campaigner who rallied against the uh, the videos or video nasties back in the 80s and was, you know, at least partially responsible for getting many of these uh, movies banned. And the story of this one, which I think is to say the, the, the most fun, uh, the most out there, um, we have these two guys watching various movies. One of their girlfriends, played by Charlie Bond, has kind of just got dragged along and they, they basically find the Necronomicon and this this resurrects the spirit of Mary Whitehouse which uh, possesses poor Charlie Bond's character and then we get variety of kind of scenes um, parodying the Evil Dead movie a little bit of commentary in regards to kind of VHS culture and video nasties and things like that it's quite fun I don't think all the humor lands to be honest with you some of the humor is a little juvenile here but I think for the most part, this is obviously made, and to be fair, the whole movie is made for fans of that VHS, uh, you know, horror scene from the 80s. And I think the, the most hardcore uh, of you, if there are any, will probably enjoy the references in this one. And not only this segment, but the, probably the whole film to, to a degree. But this one certainly, I think, is the most overt in regards to parodying and kind of the, the, the kind of the references and that sort of stuff. It was quite a lot of fun. Like I said, it's quite fast moving. To me, this was probably the funniest um, and it had the most kind of going on. And it obviously has that retro feel. It is, uh, you know, teasing those nostalgia berries, if you like, somewhat. But there you go. Uh, that, to me, was the, uh, the one I certainly enjoyed the most. There was a couple of ones that I enjoyed elements of. That's kind of the, the last one of this movie. It, uh, is a kind of almost a somewhat silent movie to a degree. Um, there's not a lot of dialogue in it. And it's about these three kind of women that are working in this brothel. In the, I think it's going to be like World War II era. And the idea being that they are, you know, getting secrets out of offices and things like this. I think it was quite artistically shot this one and it has this kind of classical music uh, that you'll recognize if you watch Excalibur uh, that you know that I think goes quite well with it and it's just it's it's not a lot happens ultimately and as I said there's very little dialogue in this one but I think it was quite visually interesting and 
you know, there's lots of sequences where we have these three women standing around in their underwear. Um, so there's obviously plus points to that to a, to, to a degree. Yeah, it's, it was quite well shot. Um, and I say visually, it had some artistic merit in it as well. Uh, the other one that I quite liked was about um, one where we have someone from the video age kind of going back in time a hundred or so years and ultimately getting committed uh, and they can't make sense of her drawings about VHS tapes and things. It was a neat idea. I didn't really think it was the, the concept went far enough, to be honest, and it, it really suffered from being quite cheap, this one, well, as to they all, to be fair. Yeah, but I thought it was a fun concept, not quite as much uh, done with it. And then one of the, I think the first segment as well was um, about this kind of plastic surgeon that goes to another plastic surgeon to get their face changed after an apparent crime. And it's kind of like that, the scene from the 89 Batman where the, you know, Jack Nicholson turns into the Joker. And that's kind of, he goes on a kind of a killing spree. It's not a lot to these films, I have to say. Um, even the one I really liked, it wasn't, it wasn't a slam dunk for me. But there are elements of these, each one of these kind of things that I, I kind of quite dug, even though I think um, narratively it was genuinely quite weak. Uh, I did think the narratives in any of these stories were particularly kind of strong. The budget really shows through. This is a very low budget movie and the budget is hampers some of them, some more so than others. Like I said, the Evil Dead one, because the Evil Dead original film was relatively low budget, it kind of worked in the movie's favour in that one, but some of them, there are definitely some um, some budgetary issues here that kind of shine through. The acting is a mixed bag. It's not meant to be um, serious exactly that there are. This is a horror comedy at the end of the day, but even so, that it's, you know, it's kind of what you'd expect of a very low budget movie. Let me just put it like that. Um, I think the, the, the there, are, there was a reasonable amount of variety in this movie in regards to the stories. So that was a plus. I have to say, I think the, the bridging segments were awful. Um, they, 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 it was like a bunch of random scenes. I didn't think that concept was particularly well done. And I have to say, some of the characters are a little bit kind of like, oh God, just you know, move to the next segment. It's just like, oh, it's just not, it's not a, not a good concept, I don't think. Um, and they spend a lot of time with these kind of segments. Uh, yeah, that, that to me, the wraparound bit was, was quite weak, I thought, I have to be honest. Um, but yeah, overall, it's, it's, it's all right, if, but it's very specific in regards to the audience. You will not be interested in this movie if you're not a kind of uh, old school VHS style horror fan. And even then, I think some of these kind of like, um, it, everything is like a trauma film. You know, it's, it's, it really is specifically looking at that sort of style of schlocky kind of crap. Um, so if it's outside of that, if you watch, you know, if you're a fan of the VHS shops in the 80s, but you weren't really a fan of the exploitation and the kind of like the B movies, it's very, a, a very narrow sort of um, audience, to be honest. And even then, I, like I say, there's still some elements in regard to some of them aren't not that interesting. The low budget, kind of like the uh, um, the jokes don't always land. So it's it's a, a real mixed bag. This one certainly, I think some people will enjoy the reverence and the kind of the uh, nostalgia barriers and all that. But it's it's a kind of um, a messier film than I would have liked. I'll give it a five out of ten. Have you seen it? What did you think? Please do leave me a comment, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.